the few who have travelled to the far continent and come back to the Isles, and those who have actually touched the soil there, have returned with notes that describe vast deserts, deep jungles, and outlandish creatures that defy belief. This quote from the book Mysteries of Pandesia reveals the remarkable discoveries made by the brave few who ventured onto the continent, and the fewer that returned. Within the same book, the Academy of Natural Philosophy depicts the Pandesian continent as a place of wonder where all life is entwined and blossomed across eons, producing a vibrant ecology unrivaled in the civilized world. In stark contrast, the overseers of the Abbey of the Everyman offer their perspective, stating, by contrast, talk of horror and heresies, of cults of submen engaged in brutal, perverse rituals. The book delves into the arduous and ill-fated attempts to establish a colony on Pandesia, a once-in-a-generation effort that ultimately ends in madness and failure. Other books titled Travel to Pandesia and the Expanded Version, a reflection on my journey to the Pandesian continent, offer a primary account by royal physician Anton Soklov and his perilous journey into the far continent in 1808. Accompanied by seasoned sailors, possibly even pirates, their experience quickly turns harrowing, with half the crew perishing before even catching sight of the broken red cliffs of Pandesia. Sokolov vividly recounts the causes of their demise, being poisoned by a school, or would one say flock, of small fish that fly over the waves like birds, landing in the hundreds across the deck, pricking any they touched with their toxic quills. Additionally, two unfortunate souls are swept overboard by powerful gusts of wind, while the quiet Tivian navigator meets an eerie fate, found dead in his bunk, wrapped in white furs, his eyes still wide with terror. As they approached the beaches, their path was obstructed by reefs and jagged rocks, with two wrecked vessels floating in the water ahead as an ominous warning. The captain made the decision to send ten men, equipped with sledgehammers and rope, to clear a passage for the boat. However, as the men on board lowered the ladders, the ones in the water were attacked by a swarm of reef-dwelling eels. The eels bit them, causing excruciating pain and making them beg for help, before they succumbed to the paralysis and floated silently in the water. As Anton and the remaining crew finally reached the shores of Pandesia, more lives are lost while attempting to scale the shattered red cliffs that serve as an ominous welcome. While Anton was collecting plant samples, a fellow colleague from the academy named Mr. Gravit suddenly began screaming frantically and hopping around in distress. It was soon discovered that Mr. Gravit had unintentionally stepped on a swarm of ant-like creatures, which swiftly engulfed him until he disappeared from sight. Eventually, they managed to get him out, but the sheer number of stings he had endured left him unrecognisable, his face had swelled significantly, and he succumbed to his injuries before they could even drag him back to the beach. Continuing the expedition, the crew came across small rodents resembling rabbits or prairie moles. Frustrated with the monotonous rations he had shared with his crew, the captain decided to catch one of these creatures with his bare hands, intending to eat it. His actions provoked the animal, which retaliated by stinging him multiple times with a concealed gland in its tail. Despite the captain's insistence on continuing, he soon began to complain about scorching heat and persistent itching. He passed away a mere 15 minutes later. This unfortunate turn of events left Anton Sokolov as the leader of the surviving group, as he quickly seized the opportunity for himself. Pandesia, the largest landmass in the known world, extends far beyond the borders of the Empire. The landscape of Pandesia is characterised by vast deserts, lush jungles, and beaches adorned with shattered red cliffs, along with the ancient and crumbling structures of a previous civilization. According to Sokolov, numerous maps inaccurately depict Pandesia as smaller and located closer to the Empire than it truly is. He asserts that any experienced ship captain is aware that it takes weeks, not mere days, to reach Pandesia. Sokolov suggests that this is a deliberate choice by mapmakers that serves to conceal the Empire's true insignificance when compared to the vastness of Pandesia. Moving to the eastern side of the map, there is an island marked with the words, 
possible inhabitants. This could be related to the submen mentioned in the Mysteries of Pandesia, as described by the Abbey of the Everyman. We can confirm the fact that there are inhabitants on Pandesia, as the heart states, this tells us that the silver mines owned by the Pendleton brothers use slaves from Pandesia. It highlights the profit-driven mindset of Custis and Morgan, as their primary concern seems to be maximising their gains and nothing else. Additionally, on the middle of the continent, there is an X marking with the annotation Rat Plague Origin. This aligns with the Pandesian Bull Rat, known to be the carrier of the Rat Plague, and what the heart calls The Doom of Pandesia has come to the sea. This could be referring to how the Rat Plague may have been the reason there are so few people on Pandesia. The known fauna of Pandesia, other than the Pandesian Bull Rat, include the toxic quilled flying fish and paralysing reef-dwelling eels, responsible for the deaths of Anton's fellow sailors, the hordes of ants that claimed the life of Mr. Gravit, as well as the stinging mole which killed the captain. Some accounts even mention the existence of flying serpents. Piero Joplin, rival of Anton Sokolov, has allegedly read about whales that travel on land. These claims should be approached with scepticism, however, as they originate from potentially unreliable, insane, or exaggerated third-party sources. Given the nature of Pandesia, however, such possibilities cannot be entirely dismissed. The strange and violent ecosystem of Pandesia has led to a popular belief among regular citizens of the Empire that the land is devoid of human inhabitants due to explorers and settlers who venture there are either driven insane or meet a grim fate. One notable explorer turned insane, being Vera Moray, widely known as Granny Rax. She found what Anton went searching for, the outsider. We will do research into her story at a later date. There is also one known notable flower that originates from the south of Pandesia, the Oxrush flower. With its captivating orange and red blooms and vibrant green stem, possesses both visual beauty and significant alchemical properties. It is a key ingredient in Nurse Trimble's antitoxin. While natural philosophers and alchemists appreciate its worth, many individuals from the lower class are unaware of its medicinal properties, often finding them growing in muddy areas like the Millenary Canal. This worth is known not only because of its proven effects as being part of an antitoxin, but also due to a note sent from a man named Jerome, written to his friend Griff, stating, the canal here in Draper's Ward has been dry for some time now, enough time for the prized ox rush to take bloom in the mud. None of the ruffians patrolling this area know how special the flower can be, so I have no competition in harvesting them. But none of the alchemists or natural philosophers that use them frequent this district anymore. The upper class, on the other hand, recognises the flower's value and considers it a symbol of wealth and status. This is evident in prestigious locations such as the Boyle Mansion, which is home to one of the most renowned and illustrious families in the Empire. The versatility of the Oxrush flower extends beyond its medicinal applications and sign of wealth. In Mindy Blanchard's tattoo parlour, aptly named Mindy's Ink, the Oxrush flower finds a unique purpose. The flower's crimson hues make it an ideal source for red tattoo ink. Displayed proudly on the establishment's sign as the slogan, Black from Squid, Red from Oxrush, Blue from Orchid. In contemplating the mysteries of the Far Continent, one must acknowledge the limited information we possess about it. The accounts from those who have witnessed its wonders or experienced its horrors are, by nature, subjective and fragmented. It is through the lenses of these explorers and settlers that we attempt to piece together a fragmented puzzle of this vast and untamed continent. It is still a land of mystery, wonder, life, death, and terror, and it will be for generations to come. For we still don't really know what lies deep in the heart of Pandesia, or much at all about the people who called it home, those that still linger on within the crumbling ruins and remnants. Perhaps we never will.
He's dried up. I told him to let it warm up a little first, but well, you can't say I didn't warn him. 